Let's just address the elephant in the room. Last year's Cy Young pick didn't exactly go according to plan. My Cinderella run ended with Christian Javier in what turned out to be a pretty dreadful year for him. I'm hoping he can bounce back in 2024, but unlike last year, I'm putting zero eggs in his basket. Instead, I'm heading back over to the National League for 2024, where, if we want to get technical, my win streak is still intact. While the American League is top-heavy with starting pitching talent, the National League kind of feels like the land of opportunity where a dozen different guys could take home the Cy Young hardware. Winner Blake Snell looks like he'll be landing with an American League team in free agency or just no team at all. Logan Webb led the league in innings pitched and walk rate, but I wonder if he can get his strikeout totals to those necessary elite levels. Zach Allen was awesome for Arizona as usual, but he did tail off a bit at the end and ended up leading MLB in hard hit rate against. Justin Steele fell in a similar boat, as he probably would have won the award if not for his worst month coming in September. I have no doubt that all of these guys and their contemporaries and Spencer Strider and Zach Wheeler will all be terrific yet again in 2024, but my pick will be someone who actually didn't receive a vote last year, much like Sandy Alcantara before his 2022 win. In fact, this pitcher has never received a Cy Young vote in his six-year career. This year, I'm placing my bets on the new ace of the Milwaukee Brewers, Freddie Peralta. Let me explain. Peralta has long been a guy that has caught my eye. He first came onto the scene in 2018 and had an absolutely electric debut, where he struck out 13 Rockies hitters and allowed just one hit in a win at Coors Field. Not only is it impressive to make your debut at Coors Field and actually pitch really well, but this was also like a good Rockies team. I know that concept may seem foreign now, but this team won 91 games and Freddie Peralta walked in and punched him out. Despite that first crazy game, his first two years were a bit up and down, bouncing between a starter and reliever role with mixed results, much like his former teammate Corbin Burns. Freddie came up so young that by his fourth season in 2021, he was still only 25 years old. He really made a statement that year, making his first all-star team and finally breaching the 100-inning mark in a season for the first time since his minor league days. His 33.6 strikeout percentage was third best in baseball that year, trailing only Max Scherzer and the Cy Young winner in Corbin Burns. If you're a fan of Red Bubbles, I mean, just check out this 2021 page, man. Oh, it's sublime. It's godlike. It's good. I seriously considered picking him for my 2022 bid before eventually going with Sandy, but I was fully prepared to be oh so sad if Peralta got his hands on the Cy Young. But to my shock, he took a massive step back the following season in 2022. The injury bug did hit him hard and it cut his inning totals in half and dealt a decent blow to his once unbelievable strikeout numbers. Despite this, his peripherals remained roughly the same. While 2023 wasn't Cy Young caliber for Peralta numbers wise, it was an incredibly important step in my arms for two key reasons. One was workload. He pitched a career best 165 and two thirds innings and made 30 starts for the first time last year. If you're going to contend for the league Cy Young, innings is going to be a huge part of your case. In fact, only one Cy Young winner in the past 20 years for either league has thrown under 170 innings, and that was Corbin Burns in 2021. This is obviously excluding 2020 and Eric Gagne in 2003 because that was over 20 years ago. 2003 was over 20 years ago. 2003 was over 20 years ago. Most have thrown well over 200 innings, and I still think Freddy Peralta is capable of eclipsing that mark. He steadily improved as he pitched deeper into a game last year, with his lowest opposing OPS coming in the 75 to 100 pitch range. The second part of the equation here is velocity. Peralta, despite his great strikeout potential, has never been a world-beating heat kind of guy. On a scale of Alaska to Arizona, he's like uh, Pennsylvania. He's averaged around 93 miles per hour on his fastball for basically his entire career. Last Last year, he averaged 94.4 miles per hour on his heater, a significant jump to be made somewhat deep into a career. That speed may not sound like much, but there's a reason we're going to highlight it. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's talk about some concrete numbers from last season that have me excited. The sexy stat with Peralta is, and has always been, strikeouts. Last year, he set a career high with 210 total, and his 30.9 strikeout percentage was fourth best in baseball, just trailing Kevin Gaussman, Blake Snell, and Spencer Strider. But I think the more intriguing part of his game last year came on the other side with how he limited walks. In 2023, Peralta registered his best strikeout to walk ratio in a season where he pitched at least 70 innings. While his absurd strikeout percentage was right around his career average, his 7.9 walk percentage was significantly better than his 10.0 walk percentage entering the year. His strikeout to walk ratio of 22.9% was in the top six of all pitchers in baseball as a result. He was throwing his pitches with more confidence, living in the zone more than ever, especially with his fastball. Even though last year's 
Series winner in the National League threw more balls than basically any Cy Young winner ever, I think this is actually a good thing for Peralta. A lot of people like George Kirby in the American League this year as kind of a dark horse candidate, and that guy is allergic to balls. It's important to note that Peralta really struggled for essentially the entire first half last season. However, Peralta's performance over his last 11 starts, which, mind you, took him to his largest innings pitch total of his career, actually lowered his season ERA by nearly a full run. Peralta won Pitcher of the Month honors in the National League in August, where he posted a 5-0 record and a 2.10 ERA in 30 innings. In September, he was just as good, managing the best single-month whip mark of his career at 0.825. Let's analyze just one of these starts, partly because it's important to the conversation, and also partly because I just miss watching baseball. The Phillies were in town, and we had a marquee matchup between Freddie Peralta and Zach Wheeler. In the top of the first inning, Freddie Peralta battled Kyle Schwarber in an eight-pitch at-bat that ended with a solo home run off his first curveball of the game. Wait a minute, this video is about praising Peralta. How, how did this get in the script? Well, Peralta would throw just eight more curveballs on the day, and instead he went back to his steady diet of fastballs and changeups that preceded that clobbering. After the leadoff home run, Peralta allowed just one more base runner over the next six innings. He punched out 10 Phillies and walked none, with eight of the 10 strikeouts coming via the fastball or the changeup. Of the eight other outs that weren't strikeouts, seven of them were ground balls, with five of them coming via the fastball or the slider. This means there was only one fly ball or line drive out on the day, and the other 17 were strikeouts and grounders. Although his curveball was his original secondary when he came into the league in 2018, Peralta is a different pitcher than he was five years ago. That's important to note. He developed his slider in 2021, and he steadily refined his changeup over the years of his career. Last year was the first year where his curveball was not one of his top three most thrown pitches, and I think this trend might continue in 2024. The reasoning for his second half success can be studied in some of his batted ball data. Peralta saw a decent spike in his ground ball rate. He managed a 33.1 ground ball percentage from 2018 to 2022 entering last year and was able to increase that mark by nearly 10%, jumping to 42.3%. He had nine starts last year where he induced seven or more ground balls. Over half of them came in the final dozen or so starts that were just mentioned, including that dominant Philly start. So this was something that Peralta altered throughout the season. The reason for this can also be attributed to his increasing velocity. Now, before we get to that, I want to note that if if you hop over to Peralta's Savant or Fangraphs page, you will see some worrisome numbers in the contact department, specifically in hard hit and home run numbers. This is an area that I believe has plenty of room for positive regression. Peralta's home run numbers likely spiked because he threw his fastball more than ever, and he attacked the zone with more frequency. His hard hit and home run numbers naturally worsened because of this. His home run to fly ball rate landed at a staggeringly high 16.0%, seventh highest in all of baseball for pitchers with at least 150 innings. We saw a natural regression in this stat for Sandy Alcantara between 2021 and 2022, and it's possible for Peralta as well. However, a closer look shows that his numbers mostly evened out in the end, with some of them even signaling good signs for 2024. He ended 2023 with an average exit velocity of 87.6 miles per hour, which was actually seventh best among all MLB pitchers with at least 150 innings. While he was inducing more barrels and hard hits, it also came with a 14.9 degree launch angle on opposing hitters, the lowest mark of his career and right around where Garrett Cole sat as well. So Peralta is throwing harder than ever, he's inducing more ground balls than ever, he's punching a ton of tickets as usual, but he's also allowing a lot more hard contact, though there's reason to think that things will even out this year. Let's finally talk about the first note there, Freddy Peralta's improved velocity across the board. There is a science to the madness here, and believe it or not, it's actually very similar to what made me like Christian Javier so much last year. Yeah, that's right, I'm going back to the same well, and I'm prepared to get hurt again, but we're going to talk about V. AA, otherwise known as vertical approach angle, and not Vado Aristides Aquino. I think my brain is broken. The biggest storyline for Peralta was his surprising jump in velocity across all of his pitches last season. His fastball sat at a career best 94.4 miles per hour on average. Peralta also added over two ticks of velocity to both his off speed and breaking pitches as well. As for how he did this, there are a few theories. One is the fact that Peralta was finally just healthy after missing chunks of last year with a right lat injury and part of 2021 with a shoulder problem. Another idea is that Peralta altered his windup. He's known for a quick 
quick windup to his throw, and last year he slowed things down a bit. Even before his jump in 2023, Peralta has always been able to play up his velocity thanks to great extension in his pitching motion. Extension is the stride a pitcher gets off the rubber towards home plate in their throwing motion. A longer extension heightens the perceived velocity of a pitch, and Peralta has always ranked in the 88th percentile or better, getting about 7 feet of extension on average. So while the mound is 60 feet 6 inches away from home plate, Peralta's release point is actually just 53 feet away. Last year, he sat 94.4, which means he really sat around 98, even 99 miles per hour. If you watched last year's Cy Young video on Christian Javier or Foolish Bailey's video on Alexis Diaz, then you might already be familiar with the concept of VAA. However, its explanation bears repeating. When we think of pitching, we think of hulking giants throwing balls off a small little hill, which is very silly in concept. Most of them come over the top, but not all of them. Many relievers feature submarine or sidearm styles that alter this notion heavily. There are a few starters that do this though, and Peralta is one of them. His three-quarters-esque throwing motion is key here. Because he comes at a lower release point but throws closer to home plate, he's not really throwing downward off a hill, or a mound, if you will. He's throwing the pitch flatter, which means it's going to be tougher for hitters to sweet spot and lift the ball. Anytime they do, hard contact will be ground balls a majority of the time, hence his aforementioned spike in those areas. Peralta boasts a top 30 mark in vertical approach angles among fastballs at negative 3.9 inches, but it's also tied for the best of any starting pitcher with Joe Ryan. The thing is, Peralta's actual velocity of 94.4 miles per hour on average is much better than any starter around him in this stat. Joe Ryan, Andrew Heaney, and Julio Tehran can match Peralta's extension and arm angle, but not how fast he's able to naturally throw the ball. This makes his four-seamer something of a one under pitch among all starters. An easy way to see this in action is a simple comparison. Let's look at the fastballs from Freddie Peralta and Griffin Canning, a starter for the Los Angeles Angels. The movement data on these two guys' fastball is virtually identical. 94 miles per hour on the gun, around 15 inches of vertical movement, and around 7 inches of horizontal movement. He even had a negative 4.5 vertical approach angle, which is good for a starter and only slightly higher than Peralta's. So if they have the exact same fastball and exact same slot, why is Peralta Peralta's valued at a plus 10 run value and Canning's at a negative 1. The answer is extension. Canning's extension is about 6 feet, which is a full foot less than Peralta's, 21st percentile in all of baseball. There's no pitcher in baseball that can match Peralta's vertical approach angle, extension, and natural velocity. According to StatCast, he was one of just 9 pitchers to throw his fastball 50% or more among all pitches thrown in 2023. He's up here with some elite company. His four-seam is also super efficient. Peralta registered a 117 stuff plus on his fastball. This is a metric that grades out the release point, velocity, vertical and horizontal movement, and spin rate of a pitch, all into one all-encompassing stat. His mark of 117 is tied for fifth best in MLB, trailing only Strider, Cole, Cease, and Snell. His fastball also ranked positively for pitch plus, a stat that tracks the physical characteristics, location, and count of each pitch, and location plus, a metric that examines count and pitch type of a pitcher's ability to put pitches in the right place. Simply put, it's one of the best four-seamers in the game, and it's complemented well by his secondaries. His other pitches, though used less with less impressive metrics, shouldn't be understated either. He was one of just three pitchers in baseball to maintain a 115 stuff plus or better on both a fastball and a slider, alongside Garrett Cole and Dylan Cease. That two-pitch dynamic could be truly lethal, especially if he gets a tertiary pitch like his curveball or changeup to come back around. He was also just one of 18 starting pitchers to grade out above league average overall for stuff plus, location plus, and pitch plus metrics. That was a lot of data, but the crux of it is this. Freddy Peralta suddenly gained natural velocity last year, which makes his already unique throwing motion all the more special. If he's able to continue trending upwards in inning totals and maintain his strikeout numbers, I truly believe 2024 will be the best season of his career and maybe the best of anybody in the National League. Listen, he's not the favorite. He's not even close to the favorite right now. The odds on him winning are plus three 3,000, which makes for a good sprinkle bit, but isn't exactly a confidence booster. But if he stays healthy and gets one of his slider, curveball, or changeup to click the way he did in 2021, I think Peralta stands a very good shot. I think not enough people are paying attention to him. He's a better pitcher than he's ever been, and at age 28, he could be entering the most impressive stage of his career. So yeah, that's my Cy Young bid for 2024. If I'm wrong again, I might just hang up my cleats after this one, but if I'm right, that's 3-0 in the National League, baby. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's analysis. If you did, consider 
consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the Jolly Olive channel. And if you hung around this long, I just want to thank all of you for helping me reach 100,000 subscribers. It was a milestone I was chasing for three and a half years, finally climbed the mountain, and I can't wait to see what comes next out of this channel. I love making content for you guys, so thank you once again. That'll do it for this video, and I'll see you guys next time.